I will roll. Okay. Well, hello everyone. Happy New Year. <coughs> And welcome to Networking 101. My name is Lisa Smith, and I have my own company. It's called Life by Design, Coaching and Hypnotherapy. And so what I want to do today is explain to you a little bit about my business, what I do, how I help people, who I help, and uh, kind of just demystify a lot, of, a lot of what I do. People either don't know anything about hypnosis or what they do know is really misrepresented or a lot of times they're afraid of it. Um, hypnosis is only one of the tools that I use. I call myself a, um, a mindset coach, basically meaning I help people to change their limiting thoughts, habits, beliefs, and patterns uh, that are creating results that they're not happy with in their lives so they can create better results. And I do that using the power of the mind, using tools like hypnosis, EFT, NLP, and I'll explain what all of those letters mean uh, in a little bit. <coughs> So um, I want to do some drawing today to help you understand a little bit more about, about the mind. Before I go into that, let me give you a little bit of background. I have been a professionally certified hypnotherapist for 15 years. In February, it'll be 15 years. And I've been studying this since high school on my own, just reading books. The mind has always fascinated me, self-improvement. Are, are, you know, I live, eat, and breathe it. And so in addition to years later getting my certification in hypnotherapy to actually do it professionally and work with people um, before I was just doing it with myself, I've also been trained and certified in some other modalities, EFT, NLP, and of course coaching. And I'll explain a little bit more about those. Um, I, want to, I want to help people understand a little bit more about how their minds work. And you all heard the analogy of the iceberg, right? With um, that, and this, just imagine a rough iceberg here. <laughs> and what we see is on the surface, which is pretty big usually, but even be, uh, bigger than that is what's below the water. And this is a representation of your mind, okay? So this part up here is what we refer to as the conscious mind. The down below is the unconscious mind or the subconscious mind below the surface. But the conscious mind, this is uh, the, all the things that we're aware of, or conscious of. These are the things that essentially we can see. But in the subconscious or the unconscious mind, this is where things are that we're not really aware of. Although sometimes they bubble up to the surface and we become aware of them. But there's a lot of things that are down under there that we're not aware of or we can't see. Okay. Uh, so this is, this is how we're operating. We're operating from both the conscious as well as the subconscious mind. Now, down here in the subconscious, this contains our identity, how we identify ourselves, um, how we label ourselves, our personality, our perceptions about things, sort of the, the goggles or the glasses that we put on every day that filter how we see everything that's going on around us, and we've all got different kinds of goggles. So, you know, one thing can happen here, and you've got certain goggles on, and you're seeing it in one way, and somebody else has different filters, and so they're seeing it <coughs> a different way. You've probably heard that, that thing about witnesses, you know, witnessing a crime, and, and, you know, it's the same thing happened, but people were either in different positions or, again, have different filters about what they noticed. <coughs> And so we can have conflicting witness accounts because again, we're all operating from different perceptions. Also here underneath we have our values. Values are the things that um, house our, our ideas about rules and, and what things are important to us. Um, and then we've got beliefs. And beliefs are, are truths for us. 
but beliefs are simply things that we have told ourselves or been told over and over enough times to create it as a truth for us. Okay? Um, but again, beliefs are not truths. They're just things that we've accepted as a truth because, again, generally we've, been, we've seen or, or heard something or been told something numerous times and that then creates the perception of a truth about that. And beliefs are really important in, in how we're perceiving the world and how we're responding to situations in our world. Okay. So in the subconscious, we have all these things that create our programs, like a computer has these different programs that it operates off of, and our brain is in the, sa is the same way. Um, these are sort of also like tapes that are playing in our heads over and over and over again that, again, are influencing everything that we are experiencing. So in our subconscious, we have all these stories that we tell ourselves around um, our perceptions and our values and our beliefs based on the experiences that we've had. So all of our different experiences as, we, as we're born and we start growing up, start to get influenced by all these different perceptions, values, and beliefs. So these start to build over time. There, there's, an, uh, there's the idea that when we're born, we're a clean slate. I don't necessarily believe that because we, we now know that we're also creating impressions in the womb. But, um, but again, as we're growing up, we start to have more experiences and based on the people around us and their values and their beliefs, they influence how, how we develop our own values and beliefs and then the perceptions that we're creating about our experiences and what they mean to us and the judgments that we create about them. <clears throat> all right. um, now, all of these things here uh, develop what we call emotions. And emotions are our feelings about things. Now, there's a saying that, energy, uh, that emotions are actually energy in motion. So we've got all these different thoughts and ideas and values and things going on, and all these tapes playing in our heads every day. Um, they estimate we have about 60,000 thoughts moving around our minds every day. I don't know how they determined that, but it's widely accepted. Uh, but we don't act on all of them, right? So sometimes you have thoughts that you don't necessarily act on. We generally will act on the ones that have strong emotion behind them, either positive or negative. So emotions basically are energy in motion because emotions uh, are what are guiding what's up here, what we see every day in ourselves as well as others, is the behaviors. So all of our behaviors are influenced by our emotions, which again is energy in motion. <clears throat> and all these emotions are influenced by all these different things, your beliefs, your values, your experiences, your identity, etc. Okay. So, uh, um, so we have these emotions about all our thoughts and the experiences that are happening to us, and then that creates some kind of action or behaviors. And then law we'll of cause and effect, when we have some kind of action, we have what afterwards? Consequence. Consequence or result. Consequence generally has a negative connotation to it, but a result, okay? again, positive or negative. And again, how we determine whether it's positive or negative is based on our perceptions. Okay? So say it's raining outside. Right? How, are you, how are you judging that rain? Is it something positive or negative? Again, it depends on your perception, your story, your identity. If you are a bride having an outdoor wedding that day, how are you going to be thinking about that rain? Negative. Negatively, right? <coughs> if you're a farmer in a drought, how are you going to be thinking about that rain? Positive. Positively. So again, the rain is neither good nor bad. It just is, but we are creating a judgment or evaluation on it based again on our perceptions, values, beliefs, experiences. Okay? So our behaviors create our results. And again, these are the things that we see. <coughs> these are the things that are in our conscious awareness. But all of these things, our behaviors and the results that they create, are guided by everything under here. All right. Now, 
say the results that we're getting aren't results that we want. You know, we, we, we create the perception this is negative. So negative habits or, or maybe um, uh, results that we're getting in our lives, our relationships, our business, et cetera. Okay. Oftentimes, again, what people do is they just look at the, what they're aware of and what they can see, which is outer circumstances, things happening around them, and therefore they think that the results are based on only that. Um, so it's, uh, well, you know, people aren't buying at this time, or the economy's down, or, or you know, nobody really values this, or, you know, whatever. We, we make these excuses about why we're not getting the results that we want based mostly, again, on the, what we can just see. Not realizing that everything that we're creating is really happening first here. The emotions that we're creating about it, the behaviors, and therefore the results. So again, if you're getting results that you're not happy with, negative results, um, what you need to change is not what's up here and in the scene. You can do a little bit with that, and that's, you know, some of that is important. But the majority of it has to happen down here. Um, so you must change this in order to change this. And when you do it down here, you're going to be able to make those changes much more easily, much more quickly, and much more permanently. When you're only trying to make the changes up here on the conscious level using what we call willpower, you know, people talk about that this time of year, New Year's resolutions, oh, I muster up all my willpower and I'm going to exercise more and I'm going to eat better and I'm going to, you know, go to the gym or whatever. But, but we're, again, we're trying to exert just willpower. Yes, you have a question, Ron? Oh, thank you. So when we're just trying to work on the surface level with things like willpower, again, just the things that we can see, there's a whole lot more struggle. It takes uh, a whole lot longer because the conscious mind learns mostly through repetition. And uh, generally, again, it's going to be temporary because this is what's stronger <coughs> and what's guiding everything. So when we exert only willpower, uh, again, we're gonna ha it's going to be a whole lot harder and take a lot longer and usually is not going to last because we're, we're using a lot of effort to do this. And we can't sustain high effort for a long period of time. So in order to make those changes easier, and again, more permanently, we have to start to work with the subconscious mind, which is the autopilot. Okay, put yourself on <laughs> autopilot in the right way, because you're already on auto autopilot. You're, you're on autopilot for creating these results that you're not happy with. Let's get yourself on autopilot creating the results that you are happy with, and to do that, you've got to get down here. All right, so these things are going to make it a whole lot quicker, a whole lot easier, and a whole lot more lasting. Does that make sense? All right, so this is what I do with people. And the tools that I use, those change tools, are hypnosis, NLP, EFT. NLP stands for Neuro Linguistic Programming. EFT stands for Emotional Freedom Technique. Okay, Emotional Freedom Technique works with the emotions and the energy behind them. So uh, again, emotions are energy in motion. So the EFT works with that, and it's called needleless acupuncture. So it works with the same meridian points that acupuncturists work with, but instead of sticking needles in those points, we found we can actually rubber tap those points, and it will create the same effect for us. Um, I have some, some videos on my website that and some information that explains a little bit more about EFT, because it's, it's, it's usually very new, and you know, most people haven't heard of it. Most people have heard of hypnosis, and again, there's a lot of fear and misconceptions about hypnosis. I get this one all the time. Are you going to make me cluck like a chicken? Bark like a dog? It just still amazes me that people actually believe that. Uh, that's entertainment hypnosis. It uses the same principle of allowing the subconscious mind to relax enough to follow through on suggestion, but of course, that's entertainment. It's there to make people laugh and, you know, and to have fun. What I do is clinical hypnosis, which is helping people to make changes 
again, at that subconscious level, happen a lot more quickly and easily. So hypnosis is simply the ability to get, the get to this subconscious level to start to change out some of these values and beliefs and perceptions that aren't in alignment with the results that you're trying to create. So we can do that a whole lot more quickly when we, when we do it through accessing the subconscious mind through these different tools. Neuro, uh, neuro-linguistic programming is, is like mental repatterning of some of those programs. Um, like imagining people all in their underwear if you're standing up in front of a cl- crowd and feeling really nervous. Don't worry, I'm not doing that to you right now. <laughs> uh, that's an example of an NLP technique. So all of these things work really well in conjunction with each other. I use all of them in my practice. Different people, uh, you, uh, different people respond better to different situations. So what I do is a consultation when people are interested in working with me so they can find out more about what I do and how I work. And I can find out more about them and if I might be able to help them with uh, whatever they're trying to change. Um, so I have some brochures here if anybody's interested in picking some up about hypnosis and hypnotherapy and then about my practice and the different things that I do. Um, I've got some <coughs> tapes, CDs, uh, things for sale here and on my website. Uh, and what I, what I usually say to people is if you know someone who's interested or has some of these unconscious behaviors, things like that, that they're trying to change and they've had a struggle with it, then uh, refer them to my website so they can find out more about me. And then if they're interested, then they can give me a call for the free consultation where I can find out a little bit more. So does anybody have any questions? Yes. Do you work remotely over the phone? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Good question. Yes. Uh, Some people I see in person in my office and other people I work with either fully uh, virtually or partially, you know, sometimes they come to my office, sometimes I do a, a, do work over the phone. I don't actually do hypnosis over the phone. What I do is I, I talk to them, I find out what they need and if hypnosis would be helpful to them. And then I make a recording for them in my office, I have recording equipment, and then I send them either the disc or the MP3 download for them to listen to. And then with the EFT, I can do that over the phone or even over Skype or, you know, in some kind of webcam system. Uh, but you don't need to, I don't need to see them, they don't need to see me for me to do the EFT with them. Trace? I just want to mention, uh, it's, it's so amazing what you're able to do. Uh, three years ago, actually it was in 2007, when I was under a lot of stress, I worked with Lisa and she changed my life. I mean, I listened to her every night, and we both do. <laughs> she did a recording for us <laughs> and talk about anti-stress. I go back to sleep as soon as I hear her voice. It's very hard to stay awake listening to her. (laughs) (laughs) I know, I put people asleep. (laughs) But what I love about the tape, too, is uh, not just de-stressing and relaxation. It's a lot of positive um, affirmations, I guess, or suggestions um, saying that, you know, we're going to wake up and we're going to feel great and we're going to have a great day and everything is going according to plan. And you know what? It's the truth. So I, I guess you're working on that unconscious level. That's a great question as well. It really varies on the person, the situation, their receptivity if we're using hypnosis. Um, I do a minimum of three sessions with people for for, for things like smoking cessation, phobias, uh, sports improvement, um, uh, for for other kinds of negative habits. I'm working with someone right now for pulling their eyelashes. I've worked with people for hair pulling, thumb sucking, bed wetting. Things like that. Usually, I'll, I'll start off with three sessions. Um, sometimes I'll do a little bit more if they have several issues they want to work with, or they've, they've got some deeper rooted issues. Sometimes it's four, or six sessions. <clears throat> and then if I'm working with people for business coaching or for weight loss coaching, then it's three month, six month, sometimes longer. I've, I have some clients I've worked with for a year, year and a half, two years, because they've they've got. Not that they're, they're all messed up, <laughs> but because, like, especially like with the business coaching, they see the value of continuing to have me work with them, keep working on some of the, you know, because as they get to the next level, they get, get breakthroughs, they get to that next level, and then they get stuck again because some more of this stuff comes up for them. So I help them continue to move through that. Do you work with such uh, cases such as 
individuals that are going to cutting? Oh, cutting themselves? I've never worked with a cutter. Um, I, I would need to, in that situation, I would need to work closely with any um, um, licensed medical professional that they're working with as well. I can, I can do some sessions in conjunction with that, but as, but as long as I'm working with their, um, with their doctor to make sure that we're, we're both on the same page and, and I'm aware of everything that's going on. Would be I, I would be willing to do a consultation and explore that, yes. Any other questions? Cost, consultation, you charge for consultation? No, the consultation is free, it takes about an hour. It's a questionnaire, people fill out some things I have them view before they come in and then, um, and then we talk and I do, if they're interested in hypnosis, I do some hypnotic testing with them also to see if that would be a good tool to use. But, but again, I don't necessarily use hypnosis with everybody. Uh, sometimes I just use some of these other tools if they're, if they're more open to that versus you know, the hypnosis. But a lot of what I do is educating people about the hypnosis so they understand what it is and they're not afraid of it and they're open to using it. Okay, well we're wrapping up on time, so I appreciate you all for your great questions and for your attention. If you have any more questions, feel free to give me a call, pick up a brochure, one of my cards, and check out my website because I've a lot of, got a lot of great information as well as free stuff that you can uh, get on my website as well, which is lifebydesignva.com. Thanks. Thank you.